It was the end of October, and Halloween was just around the corner. It was crowded everywhere, and the roads were always busy, and it was one of the coldest nights. Jerry and his brother Chris were watching TV inside their apartment and were making plans about their furniture. Jerry was just 12 when his parents died. After that, Chris, who was just two years older than him, took care of him and tried to make things easier. They both shared a special bond. The house that their parents had purchased was behind on taxes, so they had to let the bank take it. After giving their dues, the money they were left with was just not enough for purchasing in some better area, so they had to buy an apartment. The whole vicinity was covered with slums. They managed to get an apartment above a barber shop. The apartment was in very bad condition, but they had no other choice. Chris made sure that Jerry was not involved in any dangerous activities. Jerry was taking night school in a community college. He had just one more year to go and then he was planning to move away from there, while Chris had completed his school and was planning to move to his girlfriend's aunt's home in Florida. To make both ends meet, both brothers used to perform some extra shifts. Jerry worked as a pizza delivery boy and used to work the whole day long. He used to sleep for only three to four hours. On the other hand, Chris was working in a departmental store, but he had also gotten a better job in Florida. That was why he was moving there. It was one of those days. They were peacefully sitting in their lounge. Jerry had gotten off from school. Usually, Jerry used to work on his weekends as well, because on weekends there was usually more work, but that day he was not feeling well. Suddenly, they heard a loud yelling coming from outside their apartment. At first, they considered some homeless fighting over food, as it was very common in their neighborhood. Because the people in their vicinity had such low incomes, every other day they used to hear someone fighting over food or shelter. They kept sitting in their places, and after a while, the yelling stopped. But all of a sudden, they heard a loud bang, the loud sound of glass breaking and a loud wail of a man. At that point, they got worried and jumped off their seats and ran towards the window. The scene that was waiting for them was the most horrible thing they had ever seen. They saw a man in a black suit, standing with a gun in his hand. While the other man, who looked like he also belonged to the same class, was crawling on the ground. His whole body was trembling and he was trying to protect himself. Chris understood the danger and ran towards the switchboard and turned the lights off. He left the apartment in complete darkness and then headed back towards the window joining Jerry. They were standing in complete darkness, watching the scene down on the road in front of the barber shop. The man in the black suit came forward and grabbed the other man by his collar and started dragging him towards a black car. Suddenly, he stopped walking and turned around and looked up. Jerry and Chris ducked, saved by inches. He pushed the other man inside the car and then closed the door behind him. Later, he moved forward and sat down in the passenger seat. It looked like another person was driving the car. Jerry and Chris kept watching until the car had gone out of sight. They came back and sat on the sofa. They didn't say anything to each other and sat there in silence, in utter darkness. They did not even dare to turn on the lights. They both were thinking about the incident they had just witnessed. After a long silence, finally Chris spoke up. He told Jerry not to share the incident with anyone, not even among themselves. He told him to behave like the incident had never happened. Jerry nodded and still said nothing. For another day or two, he kept looking at the news channels to find out news about a missing man, but there was nothing on TV. A few days passed and Jerry almost forgot about the incident. It was Halloween night, and that was a very busy day. People were having parties at their places, and the routine in the pizza shops was very hectic. Jerry was also delivering orders to people. He had just arrived after delivering to a suburb, and the same moment, 
he got another delivery to a motel in some distant area. It was his first time delivering in that area. As he pulled his bike into the parking area, he saw the same black car parked right in front of the room where he was supposed to deliver the order. He felt his throat getting dry and his legs tremble. He gulped saliva back into his throat and moved forward towards the door. Jerry was extremely nervous and could not decide if he should run back or deliver the order. He tried to build the courage and move towards the room. His face was as pale as if he had seen a ghost. Jerry kept remembering the incident he had seen a few nights back and was wondering, what if he recognized him? Several dangerous thoughts were coming into his head, and with a heavy heart, he knocked at the door. Someone from inside asked about his identity, and he replied that he had brought the pizza delivery. The door swung open, and the same man who was dressed in black was standing right in front of him. He was not wearing any shirt this time, but his whole body was covered in tattoos, some very ordinary ones, and some tattoos of skulls seemed very disturbing to Jerry. The man did not give him any expression and screamed at him to give him the order. Jerry, with trembling hands, moved forward and gave him the box. He then informed him about the bill. He snatched the box from Jerry's hand and gave him a $100 bill. Jerry, with a trembling voice, told him that he didn't have any change. The man growled and then snatched the bill back from his hand and asked him to come inside. Jerry hesitated, but did not have the courage to negate the order. He, with terror-filled expression, came into the room. The man looked outside as if making sure of something and then closed the door right behind him. Jerry kept thinking, what if he pulled the gun on him? How would Chris know where to find him? Threatening thoughts kept haunting his mind. Suddenly, the man walked towards the bathroom. Jerry kept thinking of running away. He was just about to turn when the man entered the room again. His fingers were wrapped tight into fists. He came towards Jerry and dropped three wet $20 bills in front of him on the table. Jerry bent down and picked up the money. He quickly stuffed it into his back pocket and started walking towards the door. As he stepped out from the door, he heard it slam behind him, hard, making him jump. He moved forward to his bike and stood there for a good five minutes. His heart was still racing and he was thanking God for saving his life. He had never felt this scared, ever. Later that night, Chris came back from work. Jerry told him about his encounter with the man in the black suit. Chris worriedly asked him if he was fine and how he found out. Jerry relaxed by telling him that he was just delivering the order and told him the whole story. Chris also relaxed a little but still felt worried as the man was still in town. Chris asked him to keep his distance from that man. Jerry nodded, but Chris clearly knew about his detective instinct and knew that he would not listen. The next day when Jerry woke up, he went upstairs to check the mail. He was walking towards the mailbox when he returned and gasped. He saw the same man sitting inside the barbershop, getting a shave. He felt the same way he had felt the previous night. He wanted to go back and tell everything to his brother, but then he saw the man stand up. He was about to leave. Jerry had this feeling from the beginning that he was up to something quite bad. He quickly ran and hid behind the wall and waited for the man to leave. He did not come in the same black car. Instead, it was some other car he did not recognize. He sat inside and drove off. And as the man left, Jerry came out of hiding, took his bike, and started to follow. He maintained his distance throughout the journey. Although he had started this adventure, now he was getting terrified as well. He was wondering what he would say if the man saw him. He kept following on his bike as he drove further outside of town. He watched as he pulled into an old steel mill warehouse. He waited for the man to enter, then he parked his bike at some distance and crept towards the room he had walked into. As he reached the doorway, he tried to look inside but there was no window. Then he found a little glass at the top of the room. 
Jerry looked around and found a ladder attached to the wall. He climbed up the side ladder and stole a glance inside the room. What he saw next left his mouth drop wide open. He saw a man tied to the chair and two other men hanging from the wall. The man tied to the chair was the same man he had seen him pushing inside the car. He was not in good condition. His whole face was bleeding and there were several bruises on his face and body. The other two looked unconscious to him and he wondered if those two were not unconscious but possibly dead. He shrugged the thought out of his mind and silently descended the ladder. He had seen enough and wanted to leave as soon as he could. He quietly ran towards the bike and drove away. Later that night, he kept waiting for Chris. As soon as he arrived, he told him about his findings. Chris was furious and asked him why he followed him when he asked him not to. Jerry told him about the hostages, but Chris forbade him to do anything. But he was not convinced. He tried to make Chris realize that they should at least inform the police. They need their help. At this, Chris agreed, but he did not want to call from his number, so they ventured out to a local phone booth near the police station. They called in and filed a complaint about the man in black and told them everything about the hostages. They did not want to make the call any longer, so they immediately hung up the phone. Chris wanted to leave, but Jerry insisted on staying a little longer. They were standing around the corner and waiting for the cops to leave, but something unexpected happened. They saw a black car parked in front of the station, and the same man entered the building. Chris and Jerry could not believe their eyes and wondered if that person belonged to intelligence. They went nearer and waited for the man to leave. Once he finally left, he picked out his wallet and gave something to one of the cops. They went speechless. The cops in the vicinity knew about his cruel activities and they were receiving bribes from him. At that point, Jerry was sure what he wanted to do and he asked his brother for help. Chris was rather afraid as he knew it was some sort of big mafia that they could not fight. But Jerry insisted on helping those poor hostages. After arguing for a longer bit of time, Chris just said he would think about the whole situation and then they both left. The whole night, Chris could not sleep, as he was not sure what they should do. He wanted to help them, but the whole scenario was too dangerous, and they had no backup at all. They had to have a very strong plan, and they knew it was not possible for them to execute without any help from the cops. But to get them proof, he knew that he had to go there. He was sure of one thing, he had to expose the Mafia to some other station. He decided that first he would ask for help, and then he would think about the rest. The next day, Jerry asked him about his decision, so Chris explained all of his plans. He also told him how they would need help from the cops to get the whole mafia arrested, so he asked him about the location of the hostages. Jerry explained the location but insisted upon joining him, to which Chris agreed. The next day, Jerry took his brother to the location on his bike. He parked his bike in the same place that led him to the room. Chris had also brought a camera which he had borrowed from his friend for gaining evidence. As he climbed the ladder, he saw something which was carved into his brain for the rest of his life. He saw the same old man standing in front of another man who was chained to a chair and was beating him severely. There was another dead body hanging from the roof which had been skinned. And the other one He did not know if he was alive or not. He took enough pictures for the necessary proof and then silently crept back down the ladder. He was just on the last rung of the ladder when suddenly his camera dropped and made a loud clunk. He quickly grabbed the camera and ran towards the bike signaling Jerry to start it up. The man inside had also heard him and was chasing, but Chris was fast enough. As Jerry started racing his bike, Chris turned around and found that they were following him in his car. Chris asked Jerry to drive between narrow lanes, and Jerry nodded and sped up the bike, entering the narrow lanes as fast as possible, as it was difficult for a car to enter. 
He kept speeding the bike through the narrow routes until they finally came away and out of reach. They thanked God for their close escape. If those people had caught them, it would have been extremely bad. After stopping in a safe place, they looked at all the pictures that Chris had taken for the proof. Everything was clear and was on the mark, but the biggest problem was where to go. They could not decide who to trust. All of a sudden, Jerry remembered a friend from community school. His friend was much older than him, and it had been quite a long time since he had left the school and become a cop. Jerry insisted that they could trust him. They both went to the police station and talked to Sam. They even showed him the proof and informed him about the location. Sam was extremely furious about their adventure and strictly asked them not to ever do that again. He told them that it was indeed Big Mafia and cops had been after them for several months, but they always managed to get away somehow, and they always knew that they were supported by someone from the inside. After talking to Sam, Chris and Jerry headed back to their house, but they had not gotten too far when they were surrounded by several people on other bikes. Jerry felt his hands trembling and felt like he would faint. Chris shook him and signaled him to run. They both started to run in opposite directions, but the bikers were more clever than that. They also split up and kept chasing the brothers. It only took them five minutes to confine them again. Those men abducted Chris and Jerry and took them to the same location and locked them inside. They were also tied to a chair beside another person who was unconscious. The brothers fearfully looked around and realized there were not just two people hanging, but several bodies were hanging at some distance. All of them were dead, and because of their foul stench, the room was filled with an extremely bad smell. It was getting difficult for them to even breathe inside the tiny room. Jerry felt like he would start to cry. Chris relaxed him by stating the fact that they had already involved the cops and informed them about the location as well, but Jerry was still frightened. He was wondering if Sam would succeed in bringing his senior officers there or not. A whole day had passed, and they were still tied to the chair, and nothing else had happened. Chris had kept trying the whole day to untie his arms, but failed. The rope was cutting into his skin, and he was feeling extreme pain around his wrists. He was wondering how long they could be tied there when suddenly he heard footsteps approaching. His heart started racing. He looked at his little brother who had somehow gone to sleep. Chris stopped himself from crying and kept trying to untie himself, but then the door burst open. Jerry also woke up at the sound. They both began wondering if they would be dead in a short while. They saw the same man in black approaching them, a knife in his hand. He came forward and stood there for a while, then heartily slapped Chris across the face. His hands were so strong that the slap left a large bruise on Chris's face, but he did not stop there. He kept slapping him on both sides of his face. He even dropped his knife to hit him with all of his strength. He did not stop after slapping him several times. He then started to punch him in the stomach. Chris felt as if he would die any second, but still he did not show his pain and he kept on bearing the pain. He appeared to have no plan to stop, until a guard approached and whispered something in his ear. The man spat on the floor and left without saying a thing. As they left the room, the other guard again locked the door from the outside. They heard footsteps moving away from them. Chris's face had filled with bruises. His left eye had swollen and his lips were bleeding. Jerry could not see his brother in that shape and started sobbing. He began blaming himself for the situation. Chris stopped him and scolded him for wasting time. He started to jerk his chair and after three tries, the chair fell. He tried to grab the knife and when he succeeded, he tried to open his rope. The knife was quite sharp and was cutting into his hand as well, but he did not care. Once he released his hands, he quickly untied his legs as well. Then he ran to his brother and untied him. Chris looked over at the third person who was still unconscious. He cut open his ropes as well and tried to wake him up. After trying for several minutes, he finally opened his eyes and he was unable to sit straight up. He then informed the brothers that he had eaten nothing for a week. They helped him lie down on the floor and started thinking of some plan for getting away. 
Chris looked around. It was a big room, more like a warehouse. From the outside, it had looked small. Then suddenly an idea came to his mind. He ran towards the truck. It was a dumpster filled with sand. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. He looked around him, finding something to smash the window. Then his eyes fell on a spade lying in the corner of the room. He picked it up and hit the truck window with it, the glass shattering into pieces, and then he unlocked the door. He entered the truck and sat beneath the steering. He quickly popped open the column and uncovered the wires underneath. He started connecting wires, trying to ignite the engine. And once the truck started, he drove it towards the door and parked it some distance. Then he stepped out of the truck and told Jerry about the plan. All they needed to do was wait for the man. For the execution of their plan, they needed him. Chris was just praying that everything goes however he planned it. They both were sitting next to the door, listening carefully for any sound. They kept sitting there, but no one came, and the whole night passed by. They felt disappointed, but Chris had not given up. He knew that he would definitely come. Jerry slept while waiting for the man, but Chris could not sleep. His ears were listening to the slightest sounds. Suddenly, he heard a car stopping at some distance. He quickly woke Jerry up and got him ready for the execution of the plan. He ran towards the truck and sat inside it, waiting for the door to open. He was hoping that it would be the man and not the cops. At the same instant, the door swung open and luckily it was the man standing between his two bodyguards. Chris knew that was his cue. He drove the dumpster down on them, just missing them by a foot. They were not ready for the sudden attack. They fell onto the ground. Chris looked at Jerry and signaled him. Jerry nodded and hit the remote and watched it release a ton of dirt onto the men, trapping them underneath. Suddenly, the cops burst in. The mysterious man was arrested, along with his two bodyguards, and the hostages released. The dead bodies were also taken from the warehouse. The cops appreciated Chris and Jerry's bravery and admitted that they had done an amazing job by identifying the corrupt cops. Jerry was feeling sad for the two people he could not save, but the cops encouraged him by stating that he had saved a million people. It turned out that the man had belonged to a giant mafia. Their main business was kidnapping people for the return of money and eventually killing them. Many big names used to hire them to get rid of their enemies, and if it were not for them, they would never have caught them. The next day, Jerry woke up early in the morning and ran outside to get the newspaper. He started to read it right there. The main headline was about the mafia getting caught. Their picture was also on the front page, and their contribution in helping the police. The mysterious man's name was Jonathan Dakota. Jonathan had killed hundreds of people and had no shame in it. The cops involved in the dirty business were also caught. Jerry put the paper down and felt a huge feeling of pride. Even after the passage of a decade, Jerry could not forget the incident which changed his entire life. He even enrolled in the police force as he wanted to work for the betterment of people and his country. But whenever Jerry remembered that event, he felt goosebumps across his body.